Porter, Los aboard. American, Los Angeles class. Hello everyone, FPS Chazel here, and welcome to the thrilling conclusion of the first Salvo mission. Last but not least, the good old 688i. Saving the last for not least. So, we are hunting a Ruski submarine in this video. Video. We are hunting an Akula and a Victor 3, I already know this because I've played this mission thoroughly. <laughs> this, doing this whole mission on all these platforms has almost constituted a small series of an entire video game. So, kudos to Mr. Bill Nichols for making this mission. He makes good missions. I don't think he's made one in a while, but I would love to play another campaign of his. Maybe something a little more modern geared. But, not sure if that would actually ever happen or not, so one can dream. So what do we got? Started me out at six knots, I've slowed down to three. Uh, if you notice my voice has sounded different, that's because I got myself a mic boom and a pop filter so I can finally get my mic close to my mouth before it was like, I don't know, six or eight inches away, now it's about two or three inches away. So very good. Sounds a lot better, sounds a lot bassier, real. No popping, no more pops. Pop, 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 pop. If you know anything about plosives, I should have been filled with plosives just then, but nope, it's fine. We're, of course, due east, so I should be able to... That sounded like the torpedo in the water one. Okay. Getting our pingers from the south. Very well. Do -do -do. Has this acuity changed because I've taken in slack? I don't think so. I think it's the Lamy. Lamy. I think it's just the Lamy talking there. Uh, make sure TMA auto crew is not on. So I'm back in my natural element. Uh, I would consider the P3 my natural element in addition, but a parry can be tough, man, especially when you're not an Aegis cruiser. <laughs> so let us look to the north. Hello. So we should be expecting to see contacts. Con, sonar, Got one right there. Let me have to get the reciprocal as well. Hachiwawa, look at that. So, our toad is here, so we're getting reciprocals from off down that way. So I'm not concerned with anything due west, really. Uh, we haven't even gotten orders yet. Oh, let's check this out. Provide direct support to the Kitty Hawk. Yeah, yeah. Moscow reinforces presence in the med with a number of subs. My primary task is to locate any Russian subs before they can close to within weapons range of the battle group. Kitty Hawk is 30 miles west southwest of your current position, transiting to the east at 30 knots. Peacetime ROE are in effect. You may not shoot unless you are attacked or unambiguous hostile intent is demonstrated. Copy the, copy the sub broadcast every 12 hours. 30 miles west southwest. So west southwest is 225, 270. Oh, what is that? It's like 247 or something like that, I believe. So let's go off 30 nautical miles at 247. And uh, just get ourselves a rough mark of that battle group. So right about here. Transiting east. So, uh, no, I don't want area circles. So in an hour, be here. Not sure if that changes when the this, this, this stuff starts flying, but there you go. Drawing tools, add a, let's add an area circle. Uh, weapons range, I'm going to assume weapons range of the 65 centimeters, so let's say about 10 nautical miles, 15 for a little bit of safety factor. So we don't want these subs getting within about that line there, this group. Obviously they're within cruise missile range, there's not much to do about that. But we're picking off someone to the north here, I need to mark them down here as well, and we need to execute ourselves a turn. And we also have a layer that we should probably be checking. Our layer's at 1066 feet, I'm at 350. Probably not too likely they're down there. I could use that to my advantage. I can uh, head off in that way, break some, uh, gain some distance. So let's turn this way. And let's see what we get as this... Uh... <laughs> I found the Red October. I had to break contact to come get you. All right, let's... uh. Let's get ourselves up shallow then. Make my depth we can still expedite this turn in our current seven, position. Let's get up shallow, on. and we're going to stream the floating wire. Copy that broadcast. I'm expecting south to move, but we shall City see any second one, now. One, five, 
And I can get this stream of floating wire streaming. And uh, waiting for these guys to move. Hello. I can see tracks off in yonder distance. Was I picking up tracks here? I think it's just noise. Toad is starting to move. What do we got? Toad is starting to move. None of them are moving. Guess we have to wait a little bit longer here. Oh, it's ever so slightly started to move, maybe. It might have just been due to currents. There might be a current going on here. Very well, bring that back in. S3A reports PAS sub 3358 north, 273 east, 0458 hours local. USS Jefferson City, PAS sub report. Investigate ASAP. If confirmed sub, maintain contact unless otherwise directed to break. Wow, they want me to investigate PAS sub all the way up there. Okay, they might have started me out really far south here then. But, uh... Waiting for this turn to see what this guy's gonna do. And that's what I thought. See ya. So here's our guy here. I'm surprised they want me to investigate pass sub. I guess that's better than that's just what their intel provides. I got what I found to find to find find what. Okay. Make my All right. Five, let's get back four, down deeper. Seven, see what we got going on in the loss of acuity range here. So we got ourselves a possible contact on the TB23. Yes, that is the array I want to be using. That is the longer range array. Very well. So, right. Where is he? Uh, oh, further up here. A. That seems to be a rather high bearing rate on that. That's interesting. Oh. It's because the toad is always moving. It's always watching. <laughs> and uh, we're getting overflown by an S3. That can't be a coincidence. Why is he flying right over me? Whatever. All right, down we go. Uh, I don't want to go too deep. We're gonna have to copy another sub broadcast at some point, probably. But you know, let's just say three six zero is good. Hundred meters or Make so. Depth, three, six, two, I think this is actually the shallow line. depth. No, I don't know. Sometimes it starts you out at some random depth of like three six nine feet. I don't know why. But yeah, we're good here. This is good. Okay, yeah, Toad is still straightening out, so that's why this contact is acting wonky up here. That's why I'm not the biggest fan of the Toad, because it acts wonky when you're in a turn. But oh, does it give you long-range detection. Boy, does it. So, we want to be heading that way. We do. So I should probably turn back this way. Probably should. Probably should, even though we just uh, got here. Might as well get it over with, so let's turn back. Come left to course. Three. Come to the northwest. Three. One. Three. So, I, so that I may actually freaking head towards the past sub. But if we have any desire to get there anytime soon, we'd have to flank it. Even then, how far would I have to get to be about within 10 nautical miles of that little center there? Okay, it'll only take about an hour. A little less than an hour at flank to get up there. But that's a risky proposition there. Doesn't tell you. Might bring in the TB-23, stream out the TB-16 and go beneath the layer and uh, run at standard or something. Try and make up some distance here. Get a little closer in, but I don't want to get too crazy. But since I know the attack... Well, we know there's... Never know anything. I'm not going to go down that path. Just It's a risk that it's probably worth taking. <laughs> it's all it boils down to is that the risk worth taking. Okay, so... What do we got on our guy here? Back on view. Captain, we've just been overflown by a low flying multi prop aircraft. Put it on view. Whoa, what is that? Uh. Shit. I'm gonna be seeing reciprocals of the fleet on that bearing. Kinda blows. Kinda blows. I just straightened out. It's fine. I can just sit here and get data on this guy. It's not a big deal. Not the big deal, but we are seeing multiple signals there if we zoom in. Seeing multiple waveforms there, so I have to stay ever vigilant as to which one is what we are actually wanting. So we're possibly seeing probably that Nanuchka or whatever it is. No, it's not a Nanuchka, what is it? Yeah, the Vishnaya. Vishnaya Bichnaya is what we're seeing. In addition to the Victor, and it's lining right up on top of one another glorious 
odds of that are astronomical. Always seems to work in my favor, the cosmic irony I suffer on a daily basis. All right. Zoom out. So. Uh, I was seeing a possible 125 there. Was I? Or was I freaking out? That is not a 125. That is a 108. Where is my frequency sheet? Ah. Frequency sheet. So. I'm trying to put my stock Dangerous Water sound profiles onto this game, which is not proper. So we want, I'm assuming our Vishnaya has a diesel. Oh, where would that fall oh, under? That's a good question. Um, so we're thinking about, what the hell is an SSM in terms of a submarine? I don't know. Missile boat around that area. So we're looking at like a 550. 575 area for that third line. That might be a little bigger than that. Let's look around the 500 frequency mark. Try and find our Vishna. There's Tata and Toll. That's, that's a big ship, isn't it? Yeah, we want higher frequency than that. Higher, 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 higher. Vishna. What about the power plant? I'm pretty sure that's a diesel. Pretty sure that's a diesel. It might be a gas turbine. Uh, let me look at the model right now to see how many shafts that thing has. Two. Two shaft. So we want diesel multiple shaft. Uh, medium. Yeah, there you go. Vishnaya. So 5180. So that's not a Vishnaya. Second frequency. The 100 is going to be a big ship. Some big American ship. Yeah, something around... Wasp, Tarawa, Kitty Hawk, Kitty Hawk, there you go. Okay, so yeah. So we're seeing the Victor 3, you call it. Our Victor 3 third frequency is. Bum ba da ba, 420. Is that all it lists is a Victor 3 improved? No, Victor 3 as well, both 420. 50, 125, 420 is what we want, so. Not close enough for a 420. Ha <laughs> ha. Stoners. Um, let's see, we got our 50. 60 is American. Um, or not Russian, as I would like to point out. Let's, uh, let's up it a little bit to five knots. For five knots and, uh, probably gotta get something on the VLF sometime soon again here to tell us we got something else to copy, so I'm not worried about that too much. I like that they do that stock in they're kind of just like <laughs> go up there and see what you find purdy boy hope it's something good but this one they actually tell you it's good that i'm expecting comms at a certain point <laughs> all right uh i'm considering going a little deeper running at like 15 knots for a little bit don't know how long a little bit would be let's try and take a look at cr3 and see what we're possibly dealing with here Let's go ahead and assume a speed of 5 knots. If I remember, he was being a little balls to the wall with 10 knots, but don't have a way to verify that right now. Give me 5 knots and hold that speed constant. Give me a ping, Vasily. One ping only, please. What are you talking about, ping? So, yeah, we got lots of wonky toad data going on there, but I can kind of see the trend. Looks like it's that right there. So not heading away, most assuredly heading towards. <laughs> um, so, well, first of all, that's way too frickin' close. So this, well, we gotta back it up, back it up, back it up. A a some. Not really seeing anything. What do we got at the ten knot range? Okay, he probably has a course change in here then, because none of this is making any sense. So, that has nothing to tell me right now. I cannot deduce anything from that. We just need to, just need to hang out in the constant bearing here for a little bit. I need to get some data. Get some data on this twerp and see what we got going on. Don't think it's a fishing boat. Don't remember there being any fishing boats in this mission. I'm pretty sure this is a Ruski submarine. Pretty sure. <sighs> I don't get why they put the Vishnaya in the middle of that group. Still don't think that's something that would happen. Sonar, I have a new contact. Bear 
God, I keep hearing that, and I'm thinking it's going to be a TIW. I'm suffering from freaking stress on a grand scale. I'm seeing a 125. I'm seeing a 125. Shouldn't be a new contact. It's not. Oh, an active intercept on the frequency. That's got to be a dipping sonar or something. It's interesting. 14,000. Yeah. That is a deep error. I don't think this frequency sheet shows active sonar profiles. Yeah, I don't think it does. But yeah, that's got to be dipping sonar that we're hearing here. Some dipping from yonder way. I'm surprised that we're even getting that. I feel like it would attenuate high frequency stuff. Uh, do, 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 do. But it's it's hammering away there. So we got our 5125 and 425 is what we're expecting for the th third frequency. But we're not seeing anything like that. That's 405. Don't get confused by that. That is a cruiser frequency. So that's nothing that concerns us. That's too high. As far as the Victor 3 is 425. Because the third one represents displacement. The lower it is, the bigger the ship. I think a Victor 3 would not be that close in frequency to a cruiser in terms of frequency there. So 125. I think 125 is still strictly a submarine frequency. It's getting me every time, man. Yeah, 125 is strictly a submarine. That's the power plant frequency, so that's the nuclear frequency is the 125 there. I'm not sure if it's that if it's that stringent to sticking to 125 in real life. That would be interesting to know. I don't know what about it. 125 makes it nuclear. But that's fine. Ugh. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. Okay. So we got lots of crap, but I'm seeing... It looks like it's all one waveform there. Let's zoom in and get a better look. Yeah, that's all one waveform. That's all one... That's all a single 125 frequency line. Nothing else besides that is what I'm seeing there. So that is all that is. Alrighty, what do we got? Now we got something that looks a little more respectable. Let's see, can we really draw this out and see if there's a constant course trend in here? It doesn't look like there is unless he's really moving. Looks like he just had a course change at some point. It's heading this way. Heading this way, I think, is a very fair assumption to make. But this data doesn't support too much else. What about the 10 minute? Yeah. It's some kind of heading this way. I'm not sure what exactly the range is on that. Don't really know. It's too far. Too far. What is that that just got lit up on my spherical? Is it a Tycon? Something just got lit up on my spherical, but yet I am not seeing it on the narrow. Odd. Very odd, Georgie. Very odd indeed. Yeah, not really seeing anything. The computer's kind of whiffing at stuff that I can't see, so this guy is distant, this Victor. Mm. Freudian slip. Whatever it is, it's distant. <laughs> Whatever it is, it's distant, distant, distant. I think something along the on the order of 15 nautical miles is not insane to think. Probably pretty distant. I could probably go a little faster, but I think this is good. We'll we'll juice it to seven, seven knots here. For seven knots, on. And uh, let's continue on to this bearing for a little bit. I'm gonna do a course change so we can try and hammer the solution down. I think now is a good time for a course change. Let's uh. A little more westerly. Come left to course. Two, eight, seven, we'll get ourselves our course change and uh, some better data here. Maybe you can get a little bit of data before this video ends. Maybe not. Not sure. Every time. Zoom back in. Zoom back in. And you can see my one, two, five. Still chilling out. Rather constant bearing. He's heading about more or less for me. That line is getting stronger in magnitude. Is our toad straight? Indeed it is. We got some new data. Not yet. 
All right, well, I'm going to stop here. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. Have a good one. It's going to be back in the L.A. I'm getting myself warmed up for the Akula campaign and subcommand. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.